Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 Spring Open House. And please do use the chat box. And I'll ask our department reps, you know, watch the, the chat box. You may be able to respond to a question and then we'll definitely catch them at the end. Kind of the way that we will organize today is I'm gonna give you about a 15 minute presentation about the college, give you some general kind of information. And then we're gonna let our department reps introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their department. And then we'll devote the last part of the time to any questions. Our Dean is Dr. Francis Ward Johnson, and I am Dr. Sheila Whitley. I'm the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Student Affairs, and we are the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. We have six different departments in our college. They include criminal justice, English, history and political science, journalism, mass communication, liberal studies, and visual and performing arts. We enroll more than 1,900 students, and we have more than 160 faculty members. We teach about 35% of the general education courses. So regardless of your major, every student at A&T will come through our college at some point taking one of our classes. Although there are other colleges that also teach some of the general education courses, we have uh, a couple of the pools, we've got the only courses within those pools. So everybody will come through our college and you get to call this college home. Our programming is based upon and consistent with employment trends, and they're gonna capitalize on the elements of the arts, humanities, and social sciences. Graduates of our college are prepared to be workforce ready and prepared for graduate and or professional schools. Our college has student-centered programs, world-class scholarship, and we have some very innovative teaching strategies. And I think that's one thing that you will find different about our college is the type of interaction that a lot of our faculty will have with students. Uh, you'll find that we are uh, student-centered and we love that engagement with our students. And then in the departments, students will engage in experiences that prepare them for the future, such as internships, study abroad, and then opportunities to learn from distinguished scholars and to study in emerging fields. The mission of the college is to prepare students for a global workforce by preparing high quality academic programs, scholarly research and services that are innovative and interdisciplinary. And the college embraces the mission of the university as a land grant doctoral institution with a commitment to excellence in all disciplines. We have a professional academic advisor dedicated just to our college, and we'll give her a moment or two to talk at the um, when the department reps talk. And she is located within our college and she's dedicated to helping first year students and at risk students. Uh, she also will. Uh, talk to any student that may have some advising questions, but she's definitely a first year student and as at risk students, and that is Tanya Hamilton. And we'll hear from her a little bit later. We do have a career coach. Uh, that position is vacant right now, so we are looking for someone, but it is located uh, in the college and is focused on helping students students identify with internships, jobs, and graduate school opportunities. And this office also helps with resume writing. This uh, person is connected with our career services unit on campus. So there's still that connection that you have an opportunity to connect with career services. And I'll tell you, as an incoming freshman, you need to go ahead and register with career services and start taking advantage of the many opportunities that they have. Some of our points of pride, a and is ranked as one of the top eight campuses in America for undergraduate degrees awarded to African-Americans in the visual and performing arts and for master's degree awarded to African-Americans in English, literature, and letters. Journalism Mass Communication Department is nationally recognized in several areas. Its National Association of Black Journalist Student Chapter was named the 2018 Chapter of the Year and his public relations program was recently ranked number A. The visual arts program was ranked the number one program among HBCUs in North Carolina in 2018 and was ranked number five among all HBCUs. Our first department is the Department of Criminal Justice. 
They have a BS in criminal justice, a minor in criminal justice, and let me talk for just a second about minors. Many of our departments offer minors, and a minor, anyone can take a minor. You don't have to be in the department to get the minor. So you may be in a different department and say, you know what, a minor in criminal justice would actually go really well with what my major is. And all minors have certain kind of criteria, so you need to talk to the department to find out what the criteria is. You cannot claim a minor before your sophomore year. Uh, and most minors are somewhere between 18 and 24 uh, credit hours. So you could even look for a minor uh, in a different college. You may find a minor in a different college that really goes well with your major. So I would suggest that you talk with your academic advisor, possibly look at some minors. It's a great thing to add to your educational experience. They also have certificate in forensic science, crime scene investigation, and Dr. Carla Coates is the interim chair and Professor Keith Coleman is the associate chair. And then uh, you can get to any of the web addresses if you go to the a and homepage, you can search for the departments and find their homepage and find out a little bit more information about each department. Department of English, they have a Bachelor of Arts in English and then they have three different concentrations, African-American literature, creative writing, technical writing, and then they also offer a BA in secondary education. That's if you want to be a high school English teacher. And that's uh, a joint program with the College of Education. They also have an MA in English and African American Literature, an MAT, which is a Master of Arts in Teaching. And that program is basically housed in the College of Education. But we provide the content area for that. And there's a minor in English. Dr. Jason DiPolo is the department chair. Department of History and Political Science, they have a couple of different degrees. They have a BA in History. They also offer a BA in Secondary Education History. Again, if you want to teach in the school system, they have a BA in Political Science. They also have an MAT but in History, which is a program housed under education with the content in history coming out of this department. They offer a minor in history and a minor in African-American history. And then they have a really unique minor. It's a minor in military leadership. And you have a couple of different uh, possible configurations of that, commission army, commission air force, or non-commission. Without a doubt, if you are in ROTC, uh, you would wanna look at this minor because you're gonna take all these courses anyway. If you're not in ROTC, but you say, you know, I'd like to get some of this kind of information. You've got the non-commission minor that you can get in military leadership. They also offer a minor in political science. And Dr. Arlen Smallwood is the chair. And we have Dr. Uh, Daphne Cooper, who will be standing in as the department rep today. Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. They, their degree is a BS in Journalism and Mass Communication. Three different concentrations. Mass media production, multimedia journalism, and public relations. They also offer a minor in all of their concentration areas. Dr. Robin Robbie Morganfield is the interim chair, and Professor David Squires is standing in as a department rep today, and you'll hear from him in just a second. Department of Liberal Studies. It's a BA in Liberal Studies with a concentration in African American Studies, Applied Cold Thought, and Pre Law. They have a minor in French, philosophy, and Spanish. So their minors are a little bit different than most of the other departments. The chair is Dr. Jeffrey Mack. And then we have the Department of Visual and Performing Arts. They have three different program areas, music, theater, and visual arts. And Dr. Tony McUrchin is the chair. The first program area is music. They have a BA in music in general and in performance. They also offer a BA in secondary education music. And Dr. John Henry is the director of that program. Music is uh, just a little bit different and they've got some uh, requirements that, um, that you must meet if you want to major in music. You have to have the ability to read music well, experience playing a musical instrument or singing, and they say preferably since grade school. So I mean, they're looking for people that are coming with basically um, fairly accomplished musicians or singers. Uh, you have to be prepared to audition and they're gonna give you a music theory test. 
and Dr. John Henry is the director of this program. The second one is theater arts. The only Bachelor of Fine Arts is found in this department and in this program. So they have a BFA in professional theater with two different concentrations, acting and then theater technology. They offer a modern professional theater and a modern dance. And Professor Greg Horton is the interim theater program director. Their last program is visual arts. They have a BA in visual arts design and then they offer the same degree with the concentration in visual media design. They also have a BA secondary education and it's art education K through 12. And Professor Roy Carter is the program director. So I say questions right here, but what I want to do before we get to the questions is that I would like for the department chairs, let's stop sharing this. I'd like for the department chairs or the department reps uh, to give about two or three minutes and talk about your program. And I'm going to scan the questions. So, Professor Coleman, uh, if you could go first, that would be great. Well, once again, good afternoon and welcome to our 2022 virtual um, open house. Uh, I am uh, Professor Keith Coleman, associate chair in the department. Uh, as already has been stated previously, we have two um, tracks. We have our regular curriculum. Uh, which does allow for a minor, because we have a number of free electives, as well as our certificate in crime scene investigation, uh, which is a more specific curriculum uh, with uh, a few more courses as it relates to that particular uh, concentration. We are a new department, relatively new as a standalone department. Uh, we are growing. We have about 500 majors. Um, and a, a number of outstanding uh, faculty and looking to expand in that area. Um, and our students uh, who have graduated in our program are doing a variety of things, uh, whether it's law enforcement corrections, whether it's um, uh, law school, professional schools, um, you name it, they're doing it. And we look forward to you, those who desire to become uh, criminal justice um, students, we look forward to uh, working with you uh, for the next uh, four years, if all goes well. Dr. Whitley, is that it? I think that's uh, pretty good. If anybody's got a question for Professor Coleman, please put it in the chat. And I see that there have been several questions in the chat. And it looks like this, several of our department reps have been answering those questions. And so uh, we'll take a scan at that again. Uh, Dr. DePolo, if you could tell us a little bit about English, that would be great. Okay, absolutely. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Aggie Land. So as Dr. Whitley mentioned, the Department of English has five uh, concentrations uh, in the undergraduate program, and we have two graduate degrees. We offer courses in such areas as African American literature, linguistics, creative writing, which includes screenwriting, poetry, and fiction, uh, technical and scientific communication, which includes uh, writing for government as well as writing in healthcare and so forth. And of course, hip hop studies. Uh, our department does have scholarships. We have the Satterfield Endowment, uh, as well as a relationship with Harlequin Publishers who offers a diverse voices scholarship uh, to our students as well. Uh, the department has an International English Honor Society chapter, it's the Theta Xi chapter of Sigma Tau Delta. Uh, we've had that chapter in the department for over 40 years. Uh, English is one of the oldest departments at North Carolina A&T State University. Uh, we have a spoken word poetry troupe, the Poetic Insurgents. Uh, and we also initiated a position called the Aggie Poet Laureate. Uh, and once chosen, uh, they speak at numerous events at the university and in the community and so forth. Uh, we have a digital literary magazine, it's called Aggie Encore, and this publishes fiction, poetry, photography, and art uh, by students, as well as artists outside of the university. Um, primarily, our mission is to prepare students for 21st century markets. You know, it's, it's kind of not your traditional English major anymore. Uh, now, with that said, we do send students to graduate programs in English. We've sent them to USC, Harvard, UNLV, University of Kentucky, Howard, uh, and more. So we do have that traditional trajectory, but 
And our students have recently received jobs and internships at Dominion Energy, the Government Affairs Office in Washington, Goldman Sachs, uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency, Novant Health, Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, as well as the Washington football team. So we do try to um, capitalize on our students' talents as well as guide them into careers that they may not have previously thought were possible, you know, with a degree in English. So we look forward to welcoming you in the department. Should you have any questions, um, I'll go ahead and put my email again in the chat and feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. DiPaolo. Um, Dr. Cooper, uh, if you could talk a little bit about history and political science. Dr. Cooper. Okay, we'll come back to Dr. Cooper. Um, journalism and uh, mass communication, Professor Squires. Okay, uh, as Dr. Woody pointed out, we have three concentrations. We have multimedia journalism, uh, mass media production, public relations. So multimedia journalism students, and we have about 450 majors. Multimedia journalism students, they do traditional storytelling, uh, some video and also some uh, regular writing as well as uh, radio, they're, they're the storytellers. Mass media production, uh, a lot of those, they're getting trained in behind the scenes for radio and broadcast and also now digital. So you learn how, you learn how to do all the equipment for all those kinds of, of productions. And some of the students also get trained to be working in front of the camera, but the production side is sort of the fast track to management. Then there's public relations, where uh, you are trained to be to work for a corporation, uh, doing either marketing or PR, or you are trained to be an entrepreneur and, and do your own public relations firm and the right press releases and, and, and doing events. Uh, right now, uh, at on ANT's campus, we have about 20 students visiting from around the country and 10 a t students working with 15 professionals from around the country. The 30th anniversary of the North Carolina a t NABJ short course where the students are being uh, trained from Wednesday through today in all forms of storytelling and, and producing. So uh, we are the longest running such short course that uh, NABJ has uh, in partnership with any university. Uh, I, I, we're also very proud of where our graduates uh, go. We have uh, a student, Lauren Mitchell, who was, a, who was an intern through the Dow Jones program. She now works for the Washington Post. Uh, we had a student, East Dockery, who was on uh, the national telecast for NBA on TNT and TBS for NBA All-Star Weekend. Another one of our students, Alexis Davis, uh, she was on uh, ESPN College Game Day, and she'll be at the Final Four. And these are current students who, who are still uh, uh, in our program. Uh, we, we, we pride ourselves in the fact that our students can get the high-end internship at the Washington Post, at uh, ESPN, the undefeated, which is now called Anscape.com, at ESPN itself. Uh, Bloomberg News, uh, a very prestigious internship. Our students also intern there. And we have uh, Stephen, Stephen Morrison is an executive producer at ESPN and uh, expert in storytelling. He's one of our grads. Uh, our students learn how to do web pages, blogs, podcasts. They, knew how to, they learn how to write articles, how to edit articles, how to edit video. And they have to do a camera certification within our department uh, to use the equipment. So we pride ourselves on telling our students that it's not just what you learn in the classroom that's gonna make you a success, but also work with our TV station, with our radio station, with our newspaper, the, the award-winning ANT Register, and also do entrepreneurial things and work with local PR agencies. We have an uh, internship program that partners our students with uh, local agencies and also national agencies. Now you can do remote, uh, and that's uh, part of what we call the whole well-rounded uh, program for North Carolina ANT in the classroom and in the field. Thank you, Professor Squires. Uh, Dr. Cooper, we'll come back to you. I believe we lost you there for a second. So welcome back. Um, so we'll let you talk a little bit. Uh, and don't forget you're muted. 
So we'll let you talk a little bit about history and political science. I'm off of mute, sorry. Hi everyone, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Cooper. I'm an associate professor in the department of political science. And history and political science has over a hundred years of political science. And in history, we have, I think, over 40 or so majors. And in our department, a lot of great things. Some of our especially in Russian um, history, and that's something that's happening right now with the Russian and Ukraine crisis. Um, we have different scholarships as well as in history and political science, and we also have different societies like Pi Sigma Alpha, the political science society, and things of that sort. So we are a great department, and we would answer any questions that you may have. Um, now or in the future, and you can check out the website. As Dr. Whitley said, we have three different majors, a uh, BA in history, a BA in political science, and a master's of art history, I mean, art, uh, a master's of art teaching history, um, if you want to teach in the education system. So if you have any questions, you can check out our website, and you can also email us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Uh, Dr. Mack. Department of Liberal Studies. Hello, everyone. I'm um, Dr. Mack, Jeffrey Mack, and I'm the chair of Liberal Studies. Um, we have over 500 majors in Liberal Studies, and our students participate in a variety of different activities. Um, some of them are, are, we are part of the National Conference on Inter Interdisciplinary Studies. So some of our students are presenting papers at that conference coming up this year. Um, it's a virtual conference. And so also we are the latest chapter of Alpha Alpha Sigma Honor Society. So our, we recognize some of the students who are doing exceptional work in our department in the, in the field of liberal studies um, and inter, interdisciplinary studies. We have a newsletter that our students can participate in. We have the Liberette is the newsletter that our students are helping to organize. We have also a scholarly journal that we're pushing out and our students are being involved in that. Um, we are finalizing our global studies certificate. And so students who are interested in international studies or global studies, they can earn that certificate as well. Um, we have a number of students who will have won some study abroad opportunities this, um, that, that'll be happening this summer and next year. So we have a few of those. We have over 30 uh, internships that our students can participate in and they get college credit for those internships. We have students now interning with United Way we have a few who are interning with some law firms um, in New York, in Charlotte, and in Greensboro. And we also have an internship um, a relationship with the Mecklenburg uh, 26th Circuit Court. Um, so our students have a variety of different opportunities to get out and engage. And then hopefully some of these internships can transition into employment opportunities. So we are a, a vibrant department exciting faculty, exciting coursework and opportunities for students. So we are excited that you are thinking about coming to A&T and hopefully you'll think about coming to liberal studies. Thank you, Dr. Mack. So then our last department and last department rep uh, would be Dr. McEachern from Visual and Performing Arts. Thank you, Dr. Whitley. And again, just reiterating, I am Dr. Tony McEachern. I am the chair of visual and performing arts, and I'm also a visual arts faculty member. So I'll start off by telling you that the Department of Visual and Performing Arts does provide for each of you exceptional uh, professional programs, which combine development in artistic disciplines and career preparations in the arts. And we got approximately 245 majors. So you're gonna be amongst family when you come into our department. Our program delivered our program is delivered through individualized and small group instructions within a, a broad based curriculum. So each of our areas of study has a long and strong academic performance history. Now you can study anything from Afro-Caribbean dance to jazz music, classical theater and graphic or digital media design. Our talented students are led by distinguished professors whose primary goal is excellence. Our, 
our program directors, as stated previously, and I want to reiterate because of the importance, our program directors are Dr. John Henry, who is the director of music, Professor Gregory Horton, who is the immediate past chair of the department, who is the acting director for theater, Professor Romico Carter, who is the director for visual arts. And I also would have to say Dr. Melanie McLaurin, who is the coordinator for the dance mind is very important. Again, just reiterating our degrees in theater, we have the bachelor's of fine arts in acting and in technical, uh, excuse me, and in uh, technology. And we wanna also consider the minor in dance. In music, we have the bachelor of art in music performance and the Bachelor of Arts in General Music with the Secondary Education in Music Education. Then in Visual Art, we have the Bachelor of Arts in Design, as well as the Bachelor of Arts in Visual Media Design. And um, we also have in Visual Arts the Secondary Education degree in Arts Education. So now what I would want to introduce you to is that um, the power of our relationships. We have strong out front relationships with primary and secondary institutions. And I'll introduce you very quickly to some of our, some of our um, top level relationships, partnerships that we've established. Whereas we've established nine strategic partnerships in the, in the arts that include major corporations such as Disney, such as ESPN, General Motors, 3M, uh, the Stephen Tank, the Stephen Tanger Center for the Performing Arts, High Point Theater, Fender Music, the NBA, and Nike. And we also have uh, guest appearances. We just actually had a, uh, a legendary jazz drummer in our music department last week come and give um, a master class. Bobby Privet is his name. We have some legendary artists that we're in negotiation with now that will be coming in the upcoming semester as well. So I won't say those names now, but it'll be something to look forward to. We've already got two commitments from two very powerful legendary artists in music, theater, and in visual arts. So keep your ear open for that. With that being said, our total commitment is for the development of the students. And in development of the students, we try to offer you opportunities that are real world project oriented opportunities, some of which are award competition based, all of which relate to scholarship, internship and career placement in visual and performing arts. So with that being said, uh, we invite you to experience our areas of study and uh, investigate the Department of Visual and Performing Arts. Thank you very much. There is actually a question in the chat session, uh, basically about uh, the goal is to become a high school or eventually college band director. And so that question popped up while you were talking and they wanna know what degrees uh, they may need to achieve. So I just wanted to direct you to the chat so that you can answer that question uh, because you might not have called it. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, last, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Ms. Tama, uh, Tanya Hamilton to talk a little bit about advising and some of the strategies there. She is our academic coach for the college. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Tanya Hamilton, as Dr. Willie stated. So I am the academic advisor for the College of Arts, Science, and Social Sciences. I work with all students, but my primary um, population is first-year students. Um, I work, you know, heavily with JOMC and history and political science. But again, I am I, um, I serve as a coach for all the students in the college just in case their advisor is not available or if you just have any academic related questions. Um, my main role is to monitor your academic progress. So I do um, keep track of your grades. I do make sure that you are adhering um, to the requirements to make sure that you're meeting satisfactory academic progress. Um, I also meet with you all at least twice a year um, to discuss course selection and to assist you with registration when the time comes. So I am available um, if you have, um, if you need referrals for different campus resources, um, I will also, you know, help you with that and just any other, you know, academic issues that may arise. So 
you know, feel um, feel free, you know, to um, see me, you know, if you are here in the fall. And again, thank you for attending. Thank you very much. I just kind of want to maybe answer some questions kind of like in bulk that have come up in the chat. Uh, several students have asked about scholarships. Uh, the university has a couple of uh, big name scholarships, uh, which uh, very, um, uh, they've, got, they've got some very rigid kind of requirements to that. Um, and so those are some things that you can investigate. Some of the departments may have some scholarships available and each individual department could tell you about that. There aren't, um, if I'm remembering correctly, there aren't that many scholarships as an incoming freshman uh, because typically you need to see some kind of an establishment of a GPA within a department uh, before they start giving out uh, scholarships. But many of the departments do have that. The college has uh, some limited uh, types of assistance. And those are things that you could find out about once you get on uh, campus. And so uh, again, that's just some general kind of information about some of the scholarships. Uh, you can also always check with financial aid because then there are some other opportunities such as you know maybe work study and some things like that. So there are a lot of different kind of opportunities. So don't um, you know don't don't just limit it to um, maybe what you think it may fit into. Uh, so also talk with financial aid uh, and some other entities on campus. Also want to talk about, and I saw that uh, something came up in, uh, in the chat, uh, talking about some of the extracurricular activities that some of the departments offer. And several of the departments have some pretty massive kind of extracurricular activities, and you do not have to be a major in the department to participate in it. For example, the university radio station. You do not have to be a JMC major to work at the radio station. Uh, definitely, if you're a JMC major, you need to work at uh, and with the campus media that we have. We have a student newspaper. Uh, we have a television studio. And some of those things may be uh, limited to being within the department. Uh, the campus newspaper is not. You can, be, uh, you can major in anything and participate in that. So these are things that you need to look at. Um, and, um, you know, look, look for those kind of opportunities. Uh, the university band, and there are other performance bands and orchestras, choirs, that you do not have to be a major within the, the department. Uh, so you've got those kind of opportunities. You have opportunities to audition for the plays uh, that are put on at uh, Paul Robeson Theater. Uh, so there are just many opportunities where you can get involved. And definitely if you're majoring in one of these uh, departments where they have these kind of opportunities, you definitely need to participate in them. Um, trying to think, I think those were the big things that I wanted to talk about. I did see someone ask about a double major. Double major is definitely possible. If you want a double major, you need to think about that sooner than later because you have to have 24 distinct hours to that second double major. So it's not like uh, most, most of our, well, all of our degrees require 120 hours. So you couldn't take all these electives and end up with 120 hours and then end up with a double major. Uh, you're going to have to have more hours than that because you would not have enough distinct hours within that second major. So you can see that if you say, you know, your junior, senior year, oh, I think I'll double major. Well, you've already got, you know, at a minimum, uh, an additional 24 hours. And it could be more than that, depending on what the major is. Uh, there are some programs, and VPA is one of them, that if you're majoring in music, art, or theater, those curriculums are rather packed with those courses. So if you wanted to be a double major, let's say in English, it would absolutely work. But you've got to understand that, you know, the VPA program is requiring a lot of courses within their department. And so, you know, you, you have to uh, plan ahead and be able to work those hours in, but it's very, very possible. Um, so if you're thinking about a double major, you be sure to talk to the, the chair uh, of um, the, the other department that you want to double major in and see how you can make that work. Uh, same thing for a minor. You really don't want to come up and minor in something like your senior year uh, because, you know, you've got to have 18 hours minimum to, for a minor. Um, so um, does any of our reps, did you see a question in there that you would really like to 
to address that maybe other folk may be interested or uh, may have a little bit more global impact? I'm in the in the process of answering um, Joy Johnston's question. Her question was, "How is how is it as a transfer going into the visual art arts design? Are there requirements?" And the answer that I was putting is that yes, there there are requirements. What would happen is that when you bring your transfer credits over to the university, uh, our articulation will go through your transfer credits and we would match your credits to the to the credits that you need for our schemes but immediately you would be also be assigned you would meet the director of the program which is uh, Professor Romico Carter as well as the individual who would be your assigned um, faculty advisor you would you would you so you would meet with the director as well as your faculty advisor and then you would be guided based on your articulation of your transferred credits and the credits that you need. So um, I hope that answers your question, but that, so your requirements would be determined based on how your credits articulated over and how we find equivalencies for the credits that you're transferring over. Uh, and I see a question here about uh, someone planning to become an attorney. And the question is uh, basically what should they major in? You can go to law school with any major uh, because you know what law school requires is, you know, your um, LSAT score plus a GPA. Now, that being said, it may also right. depend on what type of attorney you want to be. For example, if you want to be a patent attorney, uh, well, you have to major in um, engineering or physics or chemistry. Okay, that's just a requirement for being a patent attorney. Um so, uh, you know, the flexibility is great there, but you may want to look at what kind of attorney you want to be. So, uh, Dr. DiPolo, do you even, would you like to address this question? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the College of Arts and Humanities in general is an excellent context to, you know, acquire those skills necessary to be successful in law school. You know, I mean, we sent a student a couple of years ago to Harvard Law, um, and consistently, you know, we've had students at in fact, we just had one who's actually working on the bar exam who just graduated from Elon School of Law. So, you know, I think all of the majors in the college offer something, you know, in terms of uh, skill sets that would allow you to be successful in law school, whether that be communication. Uh, of course, liberal studies has a pre-law track, right, which is, again, is a very appropriate, um, you know, discipline. And criminal justice, I think that's pretty obvious as far as aspirations toward criminal law. Of course, journalism, mass comm, Dr. Whitley may suggest in terms of, you know, anything relative to public relations, communication, patents, et cetera, et cetera. So I think we all have something to offer. Um, and not to mention, it's not just a matter of hard skills, it's the soft skills, right, that our majors offer, such as um, analytical skills, critical thinking, uh, oral and written communication. And so, yes, I, I think you're in a good spot if law school is something that you want to do. Uh, law school will teach you the law. Um, and then, like you say, you know, you can gather some of the other, uh, the other kind of, you know, uh, soft skills and so forth from any of the, the majors that we have. Um, so um, definitely, you know, uh, give that a lot of thought. Um, Again, you know, it's, it's not always, you know, one door uh, to get you where you want to go. Uh, Journalism Mass Comm has actually uh, sent some people to uh, medical school and to uh, dental school. And you just have to make sure that you've got your science prereqs in order. Um, and then again, you know, you, you do well on the, NK, uh, the uh, MCAT and then the, uh, you know, the GPA and the other requirements. Uh, so there can be a lot of different doors uh, to get you where you want to go. Uh, so it would be that you need to investigate it to find, you know, the appropriate uh, undergraduate degree that is going to best fit into your, um, into your future plans. 